Welcome. In this video, we'll discuss how to create and optimize a product catalog in Salesforce CPQ. You'll learn how to organize your products for setup in CPQ and explore a product catalog, including key fields on a product record. Then, we'll go through a demo and add a product to a quote and see what it looks like from both a sales and admin perspective. And lastly, we'll take a look at a subscription product and review different pricing methods. Let's get started and dive into the importance of an optimized product catalog and how it can transform your sales process. Your product catalog is the backbone of your CPQ setup. It's the foundation that influences everything from pricing to product grouping and even what products can and can't be sold together. A well-organized catalog ensures a seamless customer experience from the moment they see your products on a quote to the final purchase. The first step in creating an optimized product catalog is to simplify it as much as possible. This is your chance to review and refine your current product catalog. Don't just rebuild what you already have. Take this opportunity to streamline and improve using the CPQ tools to visualize and organize your products. A poorly set up catalog can lead to longer implementation times, a clunky user experience, and cumbersome administrative tasks. So, it's crucial to make smart and deliberate decisions from the start. When designing your optimized product catalog, the first thing to consider is which products to include. Ask yourself, does this product directly contribute to the price of the quote? Does it need to be configured? Does it need to appear on the output document? Does it contribute to the selection of quote terms? If a product doesn't meet any of these criteria, it probably doesn't need to be included in your Salesforce catalog. Once you've determined which products to include, it's time to organize them. Think about grouping your products by their characteristics. For example, physical goods or services that are delivered once for a set price versus recurring products based on term length. Products priced based on quantity or other products purchased. Products whose price is determined by a sales rep. Products that can only be sold to specific customer types, regions, or by certain sales reps. By accounting for these differences, you can optimize your catalog, making the sales experience smoother for your users and simplifying the implementation and administration of your CPQ instance. During this organization process, identify any information about your products that should be in Salesforce. Custom fields can be created on the product record to capture this information. This data can also be used for reporting and to help sales reps understand which products align with each customer type. One of the most important considerations is the distinction between one-time and subscription products. One-time products are paid for once, regardless of the term or contract length. These are typically tangible goods or services like installation. One-time products are not renewable. Subscription products, on the other hand, represent recurring products or services. They are prorated based on the subscription term and can be amended during the contract term. When an opportunity is closed one, one-time products are usually converted to asset records on an account, while subscription products generate a contract and are reflected as subscription line items. One of the biggest missteps customers make is product proliferation. Historically, companies might have different product SKUs for various volumes or term lengths. In CPQ, you can account for these differences through your pricing method or discount schedules. There's no need to create individual SKUs for each product option. SKU proliferation can also be linked to product attributes. Instead of using multiple SKUs for each product type, use configuration attributes to account for nominal differences like color or size. This reduces the number of SKUs your reps have to work with, making their job easier and more efficient. The last thing to consider is whether you need to set up product bundles. Bundles encourage solution-based selling by allowing you to group products that can be sold together under a single parent product. If you currently have packaged solutions or products sold together at a specific price, bundles are a great option. For example, let's say a keyboard is typically $30, but when sold in a laptop bundle, it's only $15 or even free. You don't need a separate product record for the standalone keyboard and the bundled keyboard. One product record is enough, and the price difference is managed in your bundle settings. Within a bundle, you can provide guidance to your reps by presenting groups of products as configurable sets. For instance, you can set up your laptop bundle so that a rep has to choose a keyboard and a mouse, but can select the specific ones that meet the customer's needs. This way, you don't need to create a product record for each potential combination. You can just use configurable bundles. Now that we've covered how to optimize your catalog to improve your sales process and customer experience, let's take a look at the CPQ features you'll want to consider when creating your products. Let's start by adding a product to a quote to see what it looks like from a sales rep perspective. 
navigate to Quotes and select the first quote in the list. Then click Edit Lines to go to the Product Selection page where we'll decide what products to add to the quote. Let's search for the PowerSlide R750 rack server. And then we'll select the Product checkbox and click Select. The PowerSlide R750 rack server is a configurable bundle, so we're taken to the Configuration page. This is where sales reps can select the options to bundle with the parent product. For example, here we can select the processor, memory capacity, hard drive, and network adapter that this PowerSlide server will need. Above, we have the configuration attributes. Bundles don't need to have these, but they can be helpful if you need to capture additional details. For example, to ensure the right version of a product is selected, let's choose performance for the PowerSlide server. Notice that we now see different options based on the product rules for the performance configuration for this product. Once satisfied with the configuration, we'll click Save and then land on the Quote Line Editor page. Notice the PowerSlide server line item and the configuration options being sold with it as the parent product. That's how it looks from a sales rep's point of view. Now, let's check out how the product is set up from an admin perspective. First, we'll go to Products and select the PowerSlide server under Recent Records. This displays the record within the Salesforce product object. The CPQ package leverages the product object and adds its own page layout with CPQ-related fields. The product record determines all of the product characteristics, such as pricing, if it's an asset or a subscription, or if it's part of a bundle. Let's touch on some critical fields and how they impact the product during quoting. First, click Related to review the related lists, and then scroll down to look at the price book entries. The price book entry is critical. Each product needs to have a price book entry for it to be available for quoting. When reps are assembling a quote, there will be a price book associated with it that determines which products are available to sell on that quote. If a product doesn't have an entry in that price book, it won't be available for selection on the product selection page. There might be products that need to exist in multiple price books with an entry in each one, as in this example. There might also be products that need multiple entries in the same price book to account for prices in different currencies. Now, let's go back to the Details tab to look at some other key elements. Notice the Active checkbox. Only active products appear on the product selection page. Select this checkbox when the product is ready for reps to start selling it. Next, review the product code field. It's important to have a consistent naming convention that helps identify the product. Each product code also needs to be unique for each product. Let's look at the product family field. Remember that creating product families helps organize the catalog. Here is where we can designate the product family for a particular product. We can also provide a product description which can be internal only or displayed to the customer on the Quote Output document. Let's move on to the Asset Conversion field. Remember that products can be assets or subscriptions. This field determines whether the product will be converted to an asset record when the order is contracted, and how the conversion is handled, one per quote line or one per unit. If the customer buys 12 of these products, do we want that to be one asset record with a quantity of 12? If so, we'd put one per quote line. If we wanted each product to be its own asset record, we'd select one per unit. Now let's scroll down and look at the component checkbox. We'd select this option for products that can only be sold as part of a bundle and not stand alone. For example, installation services can only be sold with a product that needs to be installed. We also need to set the default quantity. This field determines the quantity that's set by default when a product is added to a quote. If we want to allow sales reps to edit the default, we'd select the Quantity Editable checkbox. Next, let's take a look at a subscription product. Go to Products and select the Cloud Storage product. Scroll down and notice that this product is a subscription product with a fixed price and a 12-month subscription term. Because it's a fixed price, it will pull its price from the price book entry. Let's go back up to the related list and check on that price. We see that the price book entry is $20, so the customer will pay $20 a year for this product. Let's add this product to the quote by clicking Quotes, selecting the quote from the list, and clicking Edit Lines. Clicking Edit Lines. Search for the Cloud Storage product and select it. 
we've added the product to the quote and can see the $20 price point. But what if the customer only wants a six-month subscription? We can edit the subscription field and click Calculate. CPQ automatically prorates the price to $10. We could also update the term to 18 months. In this case, CPQ automatically prorates again and updates to 1.5 units at a price of $30. Now that we've covered some key fields and proration, let's review the pricing method field. We'll go to Products and select the Training Class product. The Pricing method field has several different options – List, Block, Cost Plus Markup, and Percent of Total. Scroll down and notice that the Pricing method field is set to Block. We use this option when we want to price our product based on the number of units the customer purchases. The amount the customer pays is set up in the Block Prices Related list. Let's take a look at that. We'll click Related and scroll down to the Block Prices section, then click View All. Click Edit All. Here we can review the different tiers that will determine what the customer pays for any quantity between the lower and upper bound. The upper bound is exclusionary and is the first quantity for which the price no longer applies. In this example, We've determined that if the customer has between 1 and 10 participants in this training class, they'll pay $1,000 per month. Next, let's review Cost Plus Markup. Navigate back to Products and select the US Keyboard Product. We'll scroll down and find that the pricing method is set to Cost. Cost Plus Markup allows us to use the cost record associated with the product to create margin-based pricing and gives us the ability to add a cost to any product record. We can account for how much the product costs our company to make or obtain. When a product with the cost pricing method is added to a quote, it pulls in the associated cost record as the price. In this example, we can see that would be $10. And that's how we set up product records, optimize your catalog, and apply different CPQ pricing methods. To learn more, be sure to check out our other videos. You can also search for topics in Salesforce Help or come join us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.